because live via the thunderstorm hotline, I got a legend, the woman, the myth, Jiggy G, joins the storm tonight for Friday Night Live. How are you doing, Queen? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Looking amazing as always. Looking amazing as always. Thank you. And let me um first say that um now when I first when I first discovered Jiggy G, I actually thought she was from Miami because of the loop connection. Come to find out you're a New Yorker, you're from up top and everything. And I know that there's um we having like some remnants of rain. We started last week and things of that nature. Um altered lives, things of that nature. I see that you're okay. And yeah. um yeah, so that's great. That's great. And um your husband is actually helping in like relief efforts and things of that nature. Yes, he is. Yes. Uh, Definitely, definitely. So we definitely got him in prayer, but um, to you and your family, to you and your friends, everybody, I just hope, and we'll just continue to pray for your safety and everything because uh, I'm glad you're all right. Thank you. Thank God. Thank you so much. All right. Most definitely. Most definitely. So, um, imagination is going. I got like six different ways I want to start. So I'm going to take you back to like hot scotch, jump rope, things of that nature and everything. <laughs> Let me give you the, when Jiggy G was about this big, like... <laughs> <laughs> kind of tell me about who that person was and, you know, coming up and where you're from and so on and so forth. Well, I am from Brooklyn, New York, and um, that's where I grew up. That was my stomping grounds. And um, I winded up landing a record deal with Uncle Luke out of Miami. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now, how did that come about? Like, I mean, because I actually, like I said, I thought you was from Miami. Um same thing with Brother Marquise. Brother Marquise was from New York, right? Yes. Yeah, so how did y'all how did you actually cross paths with Luke in the first place? Well, I knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody. So um coming up, you know, I I always had a love for hip hop. Um I've been busting rhymes since the Sugar Hill Gang came out. So I had won my first MC contest like in 1981. And after that, I would just do like talent shows, things like that, um, little showcases. And there was um, a woman there by the name of Kat Jackson, who I would love to connect with her because it's all because of her. But there was a woman named Kat Jackson and um, she was in the audience at a show that I was doing. And um, if I bust my rhyme and everything, she came up to me. She was like, yeah, you know, you good. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep you in mind. Give me your phone number. I'm going to try to connect you to the right places. Um, as soon as I get a contact, because I want to see you win, I'm going to give you a call. So I was like, okay. So she gave me her business card, and she actually was um, an executive at um, BMI, publishing company in mm -hmm. New York. Right. And um, one day I got a call, and she was like, hey, this is Kat. Um, I told you that I was going to hook you up. Um, I need you to come down to the BMI office. Um, there's a producer in Miami that's looking for a female rap artist out of Brooklyn, and I told him about you. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, the producer's name, God rest his soul, because he passed away. His name was Eric Griffin. So um, I went over to her office, and she called him up and did a conference call while I was there. And um, he said, yeah, so, you know, Kat told me all about you. You know, she, you know, she spoke highly of you. Bust around. So, you know, I spit something real quick. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And he was impressed, and he said, I'm going to fly you down to Miami, and we're going to do an album, and I'm not going to send you back home until you have a record deal. So, you know, I, I, I was like, you know, I was hardcore, you know, straight off of Brooklyn, you know, street girl, hood girl. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Never been on a plane in my life. Never was out of my hood. And um, he said, um, if it'll make you feel more comfortable, you can bring a, a friend, a family member with you, all expenses paid, and we're going to record an album. Mm -hmm. 
So I was like, okay. So I brought a family member and um, he said, um, prior to me flying down he and prior to me leaving out of the office, he was like, so are you excited? So I was like, no, like, because really nothing doesn't excite me until it actually happens. So I was like, no, not really. So he laughed, whatever. And he, he followed through. So me and my um, cousin, we flew down. And um, Luke just so happened to be his landlord. So I stayed for a week. And then talk about, talk about, talk about. Okay, Luke was okay. a landlord. Luke was a landlord. Luke was the landlord. He was he was renting the house where they did, um, gotcha, gotcha. where they filmed um, Pop That Coochie. Okay. Where they had all the girls with the thongs in the water, the two live yeah. crew, yeah. and he he um he he rented that home from Luke in Coconut Grove. I would love to have a landlord that was Luke. Just had to ask that question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So <laughs> Luke was the landlord. Go ahead. Yes, and um, so I stayed um for a week, and in that week, I recorded um fourteen songs. So I. Already went down prepared. Like I had a lot of stuff already written up. And um, so he just was putting music to a lot of the um, raps and, and the songs that I already had wrote. And um, his attorney was dating Luke's secretary. Mm -hmm. And um, Kat Jackson that did the hookup she called from New York and she was like, hey, what's going on? Um, she got to come back home. She got a baby. My son was, um, he was one years old at, one years old at the time. And um, she was like, she got a baby. She got to get back home. What's going on? You said you wasn't going to send her home without a record deal. What's popping? So he was like, yeah, I got some deals on the table. She was like, well, she got to leave. She got to come back to New York. So Kat really had my back as a woman. Right. You know, she was like, the, hey, she, she, she sent her back. Like, right. that's enough now. Come on, what's up? And she said, Luke is your landlord. Give the project to Luke. So he was like, nah, I want to get her with a major. I don't want to get her with no independent. I want to get her with a major. You know, I'm thinking about like, um... Uh, I forgot what he said, like um, Warner Music, Atlantic Records. Like, I just want to get her with a, a major label. So she was like, she got to go home. Just get a project to Luke. See what he says. So he gave the project to his attorney, again, who was messing around with Luke's secretary. The attorney gave it to Luke's secretary, and Luke's secretary put the project on Luke's desk. Mm-hmm. So when he came in, he saw it. He was like, hey, you know, who put this on my bed? She was like, oh, you know, Jonathan Black, Eric Griffin. They got this girl out of Brooklyn, and this is her stuff. Mm -hmm. So he played it, and he was like, I want to meet her. Bring her in. So, again, because I was straight out the hood, I never had a relaxer. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up in Brooklyn, like the female rap artists, we wasn't into like the girls today have nails and hair and makeup and lashes. Like we didn't do that. We just bust rhymes. Right. We would stand in the cypher with the boys and we would just bust rhymes, you know? So I just had on like my, my V-box, my jeans, and I had my hair on. Um, I had my hair. I think I had two cornrows with some baby hair. That's so dope. they looking at me like, <laughs> Luke want to meet you. We got to fix you up. So I'm looking like, fix me up. Like, what's the matter with the way I look? They was like, nah, nah, nah. So they took me um, shopping. <laughs> took me to Lord and Taylor. <laughs> they um, got me some guest jeans. And they got me um, this whole outfit and everything. They sent me to the hair salon. They threw a relaxer in my hair. My scalp was burning because I never had a relaxer. Um, right. They did a trim. They cut it up, laid it up. And um, I always had, like, bags under my eyes from a little girl so they was like you need some sunglasses <laughs> right. they got me some sunglasses i got those now if you can't tell <laughs> i always had them so they 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 um they, they money bags they money bags <laughs> yeah that's what i say too it's funny that we it's funny you said it because i said that too <laughs> 
so um, they they fixed me up and they took me to the office. So I go into this record company. Lucas sitting behind the desk. Eric Griffin, the producer, he's doing all the talking. I'm just standing there. I'm quiet. I'm just listening. So he like, yeah, this you know this this artist, female rapper artist. I found out of Brooklyn. Her name GG. Da 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 da. And so Luke like, uh, this this the person that's 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 on this demo. So he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, this better not be no man manili vanilli sh shit. <laughs> Those were Luke's exact words. He was like, this better not be right. no manili vanilli shit. <laughs> right. So he was like, nah, nah, Jiggy, bust around. So I spit something, da 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 da. And um, Luke was very impressed. And um, this was 1989. And um, they um he wanted to sign me so um i winded up going back home um they sent the fedex with the contract i got an attorney um he looked the contract over we negotiated back and forth back and forth until um a decision was made when we came to an agreement where i got what i wanted and the record company got what they wanted by the time the negotiations finished it was um, 1990 and a um, couple of months. Like it took about a, like two months of negotiating back and forth. And um, I was signed and I was um, Luke Atlantic. Atlantic was the, the distribution and Luke was the label. And that's how I got the record deal. That's cool. So if my math is correct and I could be wrong, in 1989, he's still two live crew, Luke. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're still, so I think, so working out in that stuff was probably like the 94, 95 time frame and everything. So are you just like sitting, like, when's my turn? Where's my shot? When's it coming up? You you know what I'm saying? No, I had a, a, a full <clears throat> LP because um we, we presented Luke with the finished project. Right. So once the contract was signed, then automatically um I went for the photo shoot. Um, I started taking um, pitches for them to choose for my cover. Um, it went it went quick. Once the contract was signed, it was like shoom, 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 shoom. And, um, you know, Luke, like in between all of that, that was going on, Luke was, you know, still touring and doing things um, with the two live crew. Mm -hmm. And I was just, you know, like doing photo shoots, um, doing interviews. They was prepping me. Um, I saw it management, um, everything was happening, you know, behind the scenes to get me ready as, um, his new artist. 